Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Winback and on today's episode of Pokemon Unite we're going to be playing Mamoswine, Swinub, and Pilloswine in not necessarily that order. So Mamoswine is the most recent release for Pokemon Unite here and I don't know what my Charmander is doing in this lane. Uh, but okay. I'll go jungle. I'll do it. Which isn't the worst place to be. Uh, I will just go ahead and put that out there right now. I feel okay in the jungle when playing Mamoswine. So, that being said, our items, we're going to be taking the, uh, oh man, I forgot already, Buddy Barrier, uh, number one, obviously, because, you know, broke items, we always take those. Uh, then we've got Score Shield for a huge HP increase and some backup XP through scoring, and then we're taking uh, Muscle Band because we're an attacker, and we're using some of that sweet percentage damage to make our autos hit just a little bit harder and attack just slightly faster to get some of our passive boosted attacks to happen in our times of need. Now, I'm going to go ahead and walk up for the, oh my god, they blew through my shield, nothing I can do, got to burn out of there already. Not sure where Charmander went, I guess I wasn't paying attention to the lane very well. Let's throw some ice on top of the enemy team to get our wiggly tough out of there. And now, got to get the berry, even though the Charmander definitely just tried to steal it at full health, because who knows why, but uh, anyway, so Mamoswine as a Pokemon is absolutely fantastic uh, in terms of fun. Now, in terms of winning the game by yourself, that's not something this character is going to do very well. Um, albeit, if you do have a smart and competent team behind you, Swinub is actually extremely deadly in the early laning phase uh, as far as securing XP, getting really aggressive, actually just smacking the enemy team but if you don't have the luxury of having competent teammates, it's not going to be very easy to do much with this character. Um, all of your abilities have kind of considerable wind-ups. Uh, they're difficult to use. They can get interrupted by some pretty dumb, uh, you know, kind of random CC like Lucario knockups. Um, we'll even say like uh, Wigglytuff sleeps, uh, Gardevoir stuns. And then if you're playing into something like a Blissey, uh, you're actually going to get a lot of your abilities cleansed randomly. And it is extremely difficult to work around because without Mamoswine's abilities, they really don't bring a whole lot to the table other than their boosted autos. So all that being said, let's talk about what the abilities and the autos actually do. Uh, Mamoswine's boosted attack is going to freeze a Pokemon in place. So every third attack, you're just going to freeze people just like Ninetales does, except we're way cooler than Ninetales. Uh, and then in doing that, uh, Mamoswine also, when they are dealing damage, we increase our defense and special defense. It's either when you're dealing damage or when you're taking damage, but I'm pretty sure dealing is correct. Now, all that being said, it only stacks up to three times. We don't know the actual numbers on it just yet because those are not written in the tooltips for the passive, but it could be worse. Um, so the defense and special defense increase as we deal damage, which is hugely helpful, makes us really, really very tanky, and uh, it's going to synergize really well with all the HP items that we've got in Score Shield and uh, Buddy Barrier. Um, but beyond that, obviously we have some other abilities that are big AOE damage dealers. Not that they deal big damage, they just hit in big AOEs and deal some damage. Um, and it does kind of give you the ability to engage with Mamoswine, so that is a little bit better. Um, hmm. Anyway, the fact that we're still jungling, uh, it does happen to be pretty safe way to get Mamoswine up to level 10 because you do have to get to 10 to hit your final evolution and get your Unite move, whereas a lot of other guys are getting it at level 9, which is really unfortunate because I don't feel like this character should have to scale that far, but here we are. Now when we get our Unite move, we become an Unholy Terror, but the, uh, the cooldown on it is about middle of the pack, I'd say. Um, it's nothing like... Oh... 
Well, it's certainly not going to be a, a Pikachu ult, where you just get it back as quick as possible and it never feels like you've lost it, but it, uh, it's definitely longer than a Venusaur ult, where it just feels like it takes forever to ramp up and you're stuck most of the time. So I'd say it's about in the middle of those two and feels uh, definitely huge, big, big, big impact when you drop it. But when you are using your Unite move, you're just going to stomp it out and then you're going to knock everyone up on the final stomp, dealing a bunch of damage and being completely unstoppable the whole time. You actually dash on your Unite move as well, so if you want to aim it further out, you can jump in, which is really helpful, and it acts a lot like Earthquake. Now, Earthquake is our second ability, the, uh, the ability that we unlock after Ice Fang, uh, but we'll start with that one because it is honestly the least nuanced ability of the, the whole kit. So, Earthquake lets you jump over walls, uh, lets you land in a big AoE. Just think like Body Slam for Snorlax, except on top of that, Earthquake is also going to yank people together. Missing the Dreadnought there, because I am trying to compete with my Charizard, taking a... <laughs> just stomping that Greninja out of existence. Trying to compete with my Charizard over some bees, and neither of us is actually rotating to the objective, because... I don't know. Reasons! Uh, but Earthquake pulls people together, and then the upgrade for Earthquake, uh, Earthquake Plus, is going to pull them even further together, and it is going to slow people after it lands. So if we manage to hit people in our big AoE that has a considerable windup, um, we're going to pull them together, we're going to slow them, and we're going to make them very, very easy for our team to hit. Now, the... Well, uh, the trouble with Earthquake, well, not really the trouble, the trouble for the enemy team, the good news uh, about Earthquake is that even if you use it, um, even if you're CC'd mid-air while using it, Mamoswine will still go on to land wherever he was designated. Now, that is, I'm not sure if it's a bug, because it feels pretty buggy, but it is really good for kind of doing, you know, escape things or landing on particular targets that you needed to get to. Um, it is... It looks dumb. I'm not going to lie to you. Jumping down on the guard shop, we've got the Zorora here. Can we kill him? Oh, he's using his ultimate. I'm going to get punched by one, two, three... Excuse me? And we live! We live with literally nothing. No health bar at all. Mamoswine gets out of there, and that's thanks to the HP from... Buddy Barrier and Score Shield, and that is disgusting. Now, the other ability in Mamoswine's repertoire is going to be the Ice Fang and Ice Fang Plus. Ice Fang, as you've seen it so far, is going to tusk some people, freeze them, and then we're going to throw them either in front of or behind us. If we throw them behind, we're getting them right into our team. If we throw them in front, then they're just being stunned away from us. But... The cool thing about this ability is that it does land the target in an AoE, so if we throw it at, um, you know, the enemy team bunched up, we're going to freeze multiple people and the target that we've thrown, uh, but if we throw them backwards, then at that point, the team should have just a frozen target to jump on. Oh, God. Here's the Zapdos throw. Ah. We're, we were doing so well. Let's just blink in. Let's get our alt going. Ice Fang these two fuckers together and then start hopping. Smashing the Zapdos out of existence and then using that Earthquake to kill the enemy team. Knock out the enemy team. We don't kill people in Pokemon. And then go score ourselves 100 points on the board. I thought it was going to go terribly because my team just literally ran it down and got themselves blasted in the Zapdos pit. But here we are. Thank God, everything's fine because yours truly stayed calm, cool, and collected to use that ult over the wall. I really uh, should not have Ice Fanged first, but I think it worked out because the CC that we used from that ability on the enemies, whew, it worked. It, uh, it froze them just long enough for me to get my ult off, get the shield going, and then stamp them out. Now, um, Ice Fang plus uh, the... The ability is actually going to increase the AoE uh, of where you drop the whatever character you're using. So, what that means is that when you throw your uh, whatever you're throwing, whether it's a wild Pokemon or an enemy Pokemon, they are hitting a larger AoE, which means they are going to stun in a much larger area, and that is extremely helpful for team fighting, fighting over bosses. What you were seeing there is me trying to figure out the combo for Ice Fang and then following up with 
uh, Earthquake, which is a lot harder to do than using Ice Fang and high horsepower. But that's that's a conversation for another time. The game is over. We've already won. We just dragged that Charizard across the finish line, kicking and screaming. But here we are. Thanks so much for hanging out, everybody. That is it for Mamoswine. We might approach the uh, the high horsepower and icicle crash later, but for now, I'll see you next time.